Hey Thingsters and welcome to this tutorial where I want to show you real quick what are the advantages of NumPy arrays over so regular Python lists. So um, there, are, there are multiple advantages but first I want to show you like how they actually look like. So say you have a list of some values like 1, 1, 0, 1, 2 and 42 like this and now you could also have a NumPy array A, usually it's called A and you can create this array out of the list. But before we do this, we need to import the NumPy library. And um, NumPy is, is Python's library for data science. And it's very important for um, many practical, um, uh, practical applications like in data science or machine learning, for example. For example, the TensorFlow library, the Pandas library for, uh, for data science computations or like the spreadsheet for coders <laughs> library, pandas, then we have a TensorFlow and SkyKit Learn for machine learning and all of those practical libraries that you will use in your everyday um, projects or even matplotlib if you want to plot some stuff, some stuff with uh, Python. All of those libraries are built around the NumPy core library. Okay, so NumPy is really the basis of everything. Um, for these data science com uh, libraries. So of course many advantages come in the area of handling data sets, especially if you have um, um, num numerical data. I mean NumPy is for numer numerical Python. It's a shorthand notation for this. Okay, so um, here we have uh, two arrays. Like you can now print the list and you can print the, the NumPy array and they look the same. So let's maybe start a new shell. And they really look the same. If you if you execute this, you see yeah here the list is represented with this comma notation. This is the only difference, and the array is like uh, so we don't have any comma um, separator between the different numerical values. But now, so one huge advantage is that you can have, um, for example, you can have you of course you can have two dimensional um, lists as well, but you can also, uh, so like in uh, if you have uh, two-dimensional lists, then it's usually not nicely formatted. If you if you have two-dimensional array data, like NumPy array data, then it's nicely formatted on the output shell. But this is only a minor advantage. So there are some serious uh, advantages, and then we will go over them uh, uh, <coughs> in this tutorial. So first of all, I will quickly name them. Them so some advantages of NumPy over over. Um, traditional Python lists are that it allows multidimensional slicing. And this is not possible here. It is not possible to, to, to use slicing for multidimensional slicing as conveniently as it is for uh, NumPy arrays. Then you also have broadcast functionality and uh, you can do slice assignment. You can, um, the processing speed is often even better for NumPy array. In many cases, it has a smaller memory footprint. There are some exceptions to this. And we are, you also have many convenience methods like summing over a certain axis or so, which is not possible for Python lists. So you have like more powerful functionality on, on, on the one hand um, that, that really, really highlight the advantages of, of NumPy arrays over Python lists. And then of course, you also have some advantages of Python lists, which is like they are library independent, they are more intuitive, they are less complicated. You, they are also allow heterogeneous list data so in our case, we have numerical data, which is then fine. You can use uh, NumPy, uh, NumPy arrays for this. But if you have very heterogeneous data like string values and numerical values and other objects even, then NumPy becomes really messy uh, to handle it because the NumPy array always have, has one, one kind, one homogeneous data um, type. And if, if, there are like, if there are multiple data items uh, with different um, data types like a string or a uh, string and numerical values, then it will just take a NumPy data type object, which is then le less flexible in many cases. And it will th quickly throw exceptions, like if you want to sum something or so. So it's much more convenient if you have uh, different data types in a, num in, a, in a Python list than it is to have them in a NumPy array. And then also an advantage is that if you, that you can have a list of lists where some lists have like some lists are empty, some have only uh, say two entries and the other lists have three entries like this. Okay, so it's very heterogeneous. But for NumPy arrays, this um, 
looks really uh, messy now. So if, if I get rid of my face now, here you see the NumPy array, it's, an, it's now an array of list objects. So it's really, uh, so it loses all the convenience, it loses all the advantages, it's just more complicated uh, if you have a different number of elements in each dimension. So in this case, uh, I would prefer Python list. In the other cases, NumPy is really powerful. Okay, so let's go into some concrete um, uh, advantages because we are getting kind of abstract here. Say you have a list of 10 subsequent values from zero to nine inclus uh, inclusive. And now you want to do the following. You want to do slice assignment. So on the left uh, left side, you select some elements and you want, to, you want to overwrite this element with 999. So let's try this. Yeah, Python will no, we have to we have to uh, call it uh, LST. So now let's remove this. Okay, so if you execute this, you get the following output: type error must assign iterable to extended slice. So here on the left we we select an extended slice. On the right we select an, we have an integer value, but it expects to have an extend uh, to have an iterable, so that the, the elements in the iterable can be assigned one by one to the extended slice. So here we want to replace every second element with the element 999. So this is like in with Python list, you see it's not intuitive. I mean, you know what I want to do. I want to replace every second element with the ele with the integer 999, but Python doesn't know and there's no way around. I mean, I have to create an iterable here uh, that has the length so I can use this list creation thing and I have to use the length of the list divided by two or something so it's like it's complicated okay if you want to do this with python and i'm not sure if it even works now um yeah because yeah because uh, i mean you need to you need to first need to calculate the number of elements you want to replace and then you replace them so uh, the length divided by two it returns a float now we need we need to we need to convert this to an integer probably so you see already it's complicated to to even accomplish this now it works print list now you see okay i have replaced every other value with 999 so let's check how this looks like for uh, numpy so first of all we have the convenience function numpy arrange which is like very short it's it looks pu uh, prettier than having this nested function called list range so already we see one advantage the um that it's more convenient to use NumPy in many cases and to create arrays. And now we can use slice assignment like this. So here we do exactly what we wanted to, to do initially with Python lists and now it works. Why does it work? Because NumPy uses broadcasting, a feature that is, um, so let's scroll down here. You see the output, okay, it works perfectly. Yeah. So it replaces every, every second value with the value 999. And broadcasting it, just bring so if you have an operation that requires a numpy array on both operands and you already have a numpy array for one operand and you need the same shape for the other operand like here then it just automatically transforms it into the same shape so it automatically automatically creates a numpy array on the right hand side of the equation uh, with some values 999 and the array has automatically the same shape as the array on the left hand side so this is very convenient to use it this way okay you see broadcasting and slicing slice assignment features more powerful but not only that, this i mean you can even if you have the following example i will just overwrite it here so you create an array with 16 value you uh, with 16 values you reshape the array so that you have a two-dimensional matrix and then you print the array so let's do this you get the following result yeah so this uh, two-dimensional matrix and now you now we can do the following we can do multiple uh, we can use we can slice along multiple dimensions so say we want to have all rows but only the first only the second column with index one okay now we can do this uh, quickly with numpy so we can also like print uh, um, only the first only the first uh, row so the first element is the row then we have the comma and then we want to have all values also all column values maybe starting from the second column value. So we can do this arbitrary complicated slicing operations. Yeah, you, you see that this result is one, five, nine, 13. So this is one, five, nine, 13. So it's a second column. And here we want to have the first row, uh, the second row, 
but only starting from the second index, which are these two values, okay? So you can do arbitrary slicing in multi-dimensional multi um, arrays, and this is not possible for Python lists, multi-dimensional slicing. Okay, so good. Um, then another advantage is in many, in some cases, we have a more efficient data representation of NumPy arrays compared to Python lists. I think this, this may have changed with the introduction of Python 3.8, they seem to be uh, to become uh, they seem to be more efficient now. But here you see, so if you if I execute the uh, um, I use the sys module to get the size of some so the number of bytes used by um, some by some data structures, and I create a NumPy array and I create a, create a Python list, and you see that here the NumPy array has more uh, the has less needs less bytes. So why why is the NumPy array it needs less number of bytes in memory? Uh, in some other cases, if you have a newer Python version, it may not be the case anymore. But this was a, at least it's a case for many older implementations of Python. Okay, another advantage is that you can, it's more convenient. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, I just give you, a, maybe I, I will go, maybe I'll copy here some stuff. So, Okay, so have a look at uh, this example. We have a two dimensional array with two rows and three columns. And now we want to find all cells that are greater than a certain threshold, like greater than 0 0.1, for example. Then we would simply call, so here we use broadcasting, a broadcasting operation. On the left, we have an array. On the right operation, we have a float value. Now the float array is transformed into an array of the same sh shape. And so that we can get all pairs of elements and we can do the element-wise comparison, whether a certain cell is larger than 0.1, which is a true for all cases. And now we want to get the, those rows and columns where the cell is non-zero, and we get we do this with the with the operation yeah dot non-zero. So this is like if you would implement this in a Python list, it would really be much com more complicated than just calling a function. And then you also have convenience functions like calculating the sum along a certain axis. So the sum along the first dimension, for example. This is not possible for a Python list easily. I mean, you can do everything in Python list as well, but it's, it's, it would be more, more complicated. Okay, so here you see the non-zero values. So these are the row indices of the non-zero values, and these are the column indices. And you see like zero, zero, cell zero one cell zero two cell one zero and so on so all of them are non-zero which is the case i mean all of them um, have this condition so if you would change the condition to 10 then no cell would fulfill this condition and we would get two empty arrays okay so this is like very convenient to, to do in numpy it's very complicated to do in python okay so these were just some advantages of uh, numpy against python list uh, check them out if you if you, if you love to, to hear more about NumPy and you want to build your Python specialization in the area of data science, then check out my book, Coffee Break NumPy. I think there's a link in the description below. Otherwise, just Google it, Coffee Break NumPy. It, will, it comes with plenty of like handcrafted material, a lot of Python puzzles, NumPy puzzles, and um, also like a practice chapter in the end where we solve practical problems with puzzles. And uh, it's fun. You get to know your skill level in the NumPy library and uh, you just overall uh, build you and boost your data science skill level. And I also have it if you buy the ebook. So if you Google Coffee Break NumPy or if you click the link below, uh, you can also you also get some free video tutorials um, about topics in the book. Okay, so check out the book. Uh, thanks for listening and see you soon. Bye.